Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Would you take a look at the roof? You can see yesterday we achieved a little bit more, a uh, bit off the cuff. We threw basically all the sheets up there. So apart from going up there and putting the remaining screws in and the ridge cap ins, the roof is almost complete externally. There are a few little bits to do. I shall go up and get some more video in the future. And then secondly, yes, new floor down. So this is the top section where we've applied two coats of the epoxy and one coat of the primer, of course, underneath. And this is the finish. And what a finish it is. And if we just have a look down here, you can kind of see that's the epoxy primer, which I think is really quite a good product. It's thick and solid as it is. And then here we've got one coat of the uh, resin top coat. And then over here you can see where the second coat comes in and it gives it quite what I'd imagine or hope to be quite a durable finish. So 10 kilograms of top coat went down here and five kilograms of primer, 15 kg in all. So this would be a good sized double garage area, I'm guessing. So it's not too bad when you look at it in that respect. But of course, we've probably got another four of those walking down into the unit. So, excuse me, it's gonna be a, a, a labor of love getting this sorted. I'm not gonna do inside the cold rooms. I'm just gonna leave that with the normal paint that we've got down. So I'll be marking out with tape where these new cold rooms are going to come up to and then we'll push things that like the fermenters over to this side when we do actually go and put the new floor down over here i have to though before that happens get the beer out of these four tanks so it's a case of moving everything up here as soon as possible I'd like to give this a little bit of time to cure, of course, before I put anything on it. But we are now against the clock yet again. Because I've squeezed these jobs in while we've had the downtime, effectively. Uh, but yeah, this seems to have gone off. I put quite a thick coat here. Like double thickness, almost. Just where it's going to get the most traffic. Like you can almost see a line of the reflection there. And this is, so when we're using the cask washer, which is here, putting the casks and everything down on the floor, hopefully don't cause too much damage to the finish. And if we leave it to cure long enough, hopefully it doesn't cause any damage to the finish. So I'm just going to go and have a look at the paperwork. I think it says it wants like 48 hours for heavy traffic. And then something like 10 days until it's fully cured. So it'd be probably wise for me not to put any pallets or anything down there. In case it adheres to the bottom of the pallet. I don't know. Anyway, that's something I'm going to have to start, start doing. Because this lot needs moving around. And then also we've got to figure out what we're going to do underneath this gantry. I think it'll just be a case of painting what we can paint and leaving what we can't. Which uh, is not ideal, but it is what it is. They're the final roof sheets to go on. Oh yeah, let's have a look at the inside. So you can see I ended up not replacing the lights where they were missing from because it was too much of a tricky task to remove the old uh, or the new boards. Apart from over here where I replaced that one because it needed replacing and there's also an issue where the ridge wasn't quite in the right place with the top caps they seem to have shifted to one side which is a very odd situation but I, I couldn't get the sheets up onto the ridge properly all the way along so what's going to have to happen is we're going to stick some timber along this edge here to extend the width of that ridge beam to support the weight but you can kind of see those holes there 
that's where the roof sheets come up to but that is actually under the ridge capping and you can see the ridge capping is not in the correct position there you see how it's to the side that edge should be over that timber spar there so all the top of the roofs move that way or the timbers move that way and if I took all them off that would give me something like a skip full of asbestos which I, I can't get rid of so they're staying where they are I don't want to move the stuff that one was all broken anyway that's why that had to come out and you can see that uh, with just the normal new roof sheets up there that's something that I wouldn't want to be walking on on its own but when they've got the uh, asbestos sheeting underneath and the new roof sheets it can kind of take your weight for you to scuttle across briefly without having to put any uh, more access equipment up there but I certainly won't want any idiots going up there you need to kind of have a little idea what you're doing not that I do <laughs> And yeah, just need to get those ridges on really and tidy up the ends, cut the cut the triangle sections out. So I'll just show you exactly what I mean. These triangular sections here need cutting off at the ridge at the edge of the roof and then turning round and used to infill the little sections of triangles that would be missing on the roof. As you can see, it goes all the way down that edge there with the biggest one being at the bottom so hopefully hopefully we will have enough offcuts to complete the job uh, we didn't have enough screws so I've had to nip into tool station this morning and just get some of these for stitching the ridge cap into the roof sheets because there would not be any other way of doing it the ridge capping would have nothing to screw into so I've had to fix the roof sheets to the ridge and then the, the ridge to the roof sheets if you get my drift but that's where we are this morning with the Renaults or the renovations so I need to do a little bit of uh, real life Tetris and move all this lot so we can gain access to the beer tanks and hopefully get uh, get the canning machine out oh it's a big tidying job but yeah that needs to come out the semen needs to come out they need to both be sanitized and then get ready to process the beer that's in these tanks which all seem to be sat nicely at around four degrees C if you can make that out right let's get cracking with the knocking like pit so that is epoxy repair mortar close up it's just been laid on the major cracks that we've got in the floor area and as you can see I've also blasted excuse the camera wobble a second I've also blasted this area with the grinder and taken up the old paint so repair there repair there and a repair there there's another one to do up there but I don't think I'm gonna paint that in the same at the same time we'll see we'll see maybe I will and then there's also one over there but that doesn't get as heavy traffic and at this section here I'm gonna transition from the blue back to the red again for red being workshop area blue being brewery they are distinctly separated then in terms of EHO coming in and saying well you've got a welding shop and you've got a brewery I say no 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 separate there we go that's the idea any road up like pet so <laughs> I've spent all day at this doing this repair work took quite a long time out to chip it all out with the uh, SDS and then mixing this stuff up you only want to mix like a kilo or two of it at a time just in case it goes off in your pot so I was being quite cautious with that need to move this stuff tomorrow maybe the day after back up to the new painted area back up to the cask wash area but look at the footprints already <laughs> it's because this, this is all dusty you see 
Oh, I painted the top of that as well. It had a bit of rust on it. So, uh, yeah, it's curing nicely. But I can, I can still feel that my fingernails would make a mark in there. So it's not quite there yet. And if that feels soft enough on the fingernails, then certainly the pallet truck is going to make a mark on there without a doubt. So I'm definitely not going to be pulling any pallets up here just yet. And uh, I suppose once we've done this, yeah, I could extend that bitumen line across, cut in nicely, sort the paintwork out on here, maybe even do some uh, more murals on the wall. Oh, who knows? Who knows? Getting ahead of myself yet, and I haven't got the time. And then I've stopped here, just coming back to the filler, because cold rooms are going to be up here, and the inside of the cold rooms aren't getting the resin either. It's far too expensive. And we can just, it doesn't get the foot, foot traffic, so we can just put the uh, the paint down, I think. That's what we'll do anyway. But it's enclosed, you see, so it's not like anybody's going to see it. And the biggest part of this floor renovation is definitely going to be, oh, I've painted this again, <laughs> uh, definitely going to be moving the kit out again. Oh, bollocks, I've just thought my HLT is full of water. I might set that to drain tonight then. Are we going to pull that out tomorrow? Probably not. I'll drain it tomorrow night, I think. And then, yeah, that's got to be pulled out and put over this side once this paint's been cured. So I think what I'm going to do is this section here first, after we've moved this stuff, and then like the, the pilot kit and stuff can go over here or up the top and then we'll do this section here primer one coat two coat done and then all the fermenters and everything will have to come across this side and we'll have to quickly prep that side resin primer top coat second top coat done hopefully that will be enough and we'll be looking at the beginning of April, which we're very close to now, we're on the 22nd today I think, the beginning of April being completely floor finished and ready to start brewing again, we're, we're going to have to pick up the brewing in April without a doubt. I'm pushing my luck a little bit doing all these things but I ain't going to have another chance this year if we don't have another lockdown to pull all this stuff out again and do it so it has to be done now so it's yeah got to get a rush on got to get it done it is what it is I might even have to get another grinder on the go oh, I burnt one of my grinders out as well yeah my Iron Hill one which was my favorite to use uh, oh, it's, it's not burnt out the um, the arbor is wobbling slightly, so it kept knocking itself off because it was vibrating that much, knocking the switch off, which is a bit of a shit, really. Um, and they've only got one more of those in Tool Station, and that was the only one that fits with the little jig that I made. Uh, but at least I got a bit of work out of it, saved my back. And this stuff, actually, it comes up really easy, the paint here, which is testament to how much I've been struggling with it in the past never been happy with it, it just comes up too easily because the surface hasn't been prepped when I've put the new paint down so fingers crossed this and uh, this stuff and this stuff is gonna do the job there we go anyway I'm signing out boys and girls and yeah well we'll see you on the next vlog because it's uh, Nearly half past six and I want to go home. Charles, we'll see you on the next one.